thank you, Father. We give you praise for tonight. Our lives will never be the same again as a result of what you are going to do on this platform tonight. Lord, we thank you for an encounter. We thank you because you will fill our cups. We thank you because tonight we're going to feast on far things. What a time, Lord, we're about to have with you. We are so grateful for this privilege and we honor you. Hallelujah. Tonight is going to be a watershed. It's going to be significant. Hallelujah. Daddy, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Pastor Nick. <laughs> wow. What a privilege to have you with us tonight. Always my pleasure, Pastor Nick. <laughs> wow. We've been looking forward to tonight. And it's here finally. Amen. So, we, we know that God is not given to frivolities. We know that mm -hmm. he's an appointment keeping God. And we know that tonight our lives will not be the same. Our cups will run over. Amen. I believe so too. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Family is such a great honor to be hosting uh, a covering that I have enjoyed for a minimum of 25 years. A minimum of 25 years. I have been privileged to be able to drink from this grace. Like Paul was talking to the Philippian church, saying that they were partakers of his grace. I have been privileged to be a beneficiary of this grace for 25 years. And been from one testimony to another, observing his life, learning, you know, just the, not just by the words he speaks, but by, by the life that he lives, you know, and uh, it's been a blessing. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, Paul said, the things that you have learned and received, the things you have heard, and the things that you have seen, he said, the same things do, and the God of peace will be with you. The same things do. There are things that you hear, and there are things that you see. He said the same things do, and the God of peace will be with you. And tonight, we have founding pastor of the Fountain of Life Church with us. None other person is the man that needs no introduction to the world, you know, and it's none other person than Pastor Tao Daniel. Oh, <laughs> prayer. My pastor, Father, we honor you, we celebrate you, sir. Uh, my pleasure being on this platform with you, Pastor Lee. Yours is truly, your view is truly the signs of the apostles. And we've watched over the years. And I must say that, man, the best is always in the future. You are a Amen. leader to follow and to watch. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, greetings to Pastor Nomfi. I saw that she's part of this event. We celebrate you. Lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, so our first question tonight is, what is the blessing and how can a believer walk in it? The blessing. Mm -hmm. The blessing. Hallelujah. Um, I try to look at the simplest way to describe, I won't say define the blessing. I think the blessing is uh, the permanent bestower of supernatural favor on a man. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the deal one gets when you get into a covenant with God. Mm. You know, covenant, covenant is such that two or more different parties come to table with a binding agreement. Mm as to what to do to always benefit the other person. Mm -hmm. So simply put, a sharing of lives. Mm -hmm. So what happens mm -hmm. when one has the blessing on him? That means that in anything and everything that he or she does, God is part of it. Hallelujah. God is part of it. God is part of it. 
So you're in the natural doing your stuff. Mm. And because you're sharing life with God, mm. he's doing your stuff with you, but doing the supernatural. And so you are God. always presented to the world in the natural form. Mm. But how be it is a supernatural, natural form. So things come easier than expected. Battles come easier to win. Yeah, nah. I mean, it's just it's just the God aspect of life. Mm. That's the blessing. So how do we work in it? Mm. Like everything, mm. everything Hallelujah. that God is involved in, mm. one, I have to be conscious of it. I know that I have a covenant with God. And then number two, I'm conscious mm. of this covenant in everything Hallelujah. I do. So that means that I believe it and I'm expecting God to only show up and be part of anything I do. So every of my product mm. will have a God part in it. And that's where we see mm. that when God advised me, I said, believe and meditate. So for me to bring this to bear on everything I do, meditate on what you have in God. Mm. For us in the New Testament, mm. meditate on who you now are and what you have in Christ. And the more you meditate, wow. the Bible says you will make your way prosperous. And have good success. You know, in, uh, I think in the epistle, he says, hey, Paul writing to Timothy, I believe, he said, give yourself to meditation on this thing. So yes. then you will make uh -huh, evident of all uh -huh. that's happening to you. You see, uh -huh. so uh, the blessing we always announce, the person carrying it. Mm. Glory to God. So uh -huh. the blessing is there. The, because of the covenant we have with God and then we're yeah. going to walk in consciousness. So faith activates that covenant in our experience, in our reality. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dad. So, so uh, you know, I noticed that a person can be religious, but he's not spiritual. He's mm -hmm. so committed to all the dogmas, he's going for all the services. He's religious, but it's not spiritual. What are the hallmarks of true spirituality, sir? Well, let's take it from the book of John where um, Jesus was speaking. He said, God is spirit. Mm. So every spirituality emanates from God, the spirit, Hallelujah. the king's mm. spirit, the father of spirits. Hallelujah. Mm. So simply put, to be spiritual is to emanate the characteristics of God. Mm. Mm. And um, mm. uh, so, what are the hallmarks of spirituality? Jesus was speaking, and he said, A good tree is known by its fruits, a bad one by its fruits. And there's this statement that he made that we deeply made all the time. He said, A fruit is known by its fruit. I mean, a tree is known by its fruits. By their fruits, we will know them. So, going by that thinking, Galatians 5.22 says, and these are the fruits of the Spirit. So yeah. these are the hallmarks of the Spirit. Um, wow. And I like the way it is translated in the Passion's translation. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, manifesting as joy, peace, wow. long suffering, greatness, goodness, faith, yeah. meekness. We can go on. So yeah. what are the hallmarks of true spirituality? Wow. The fruit of the spirit. Wow. Yeah. Mm. wow. Glory to God. So the all mark of true spirituality is seen in the character that we yeah. begin to walk in. The character of Christ. Mm. Wow. Wow. And so we said submission of it. If I look at that passion version that you quoted, the submission is love. And then love now manifest. All those other stuff. That's right. You see, other translations we put it as the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Mm. But this mm. particular version, particularly, say it is love mm. manifesting us. Mm. And so that just kind mm. of explains it and makes it very clear mm. to us. So, who is a truly spiritual person? Mm. Easily forgiven, long suffering, gentle, peaceful, joyful. I mean, mm. and these are not things that you mm. act. They just flow yes. from your inner being. Yes. 
Yes. Please yes. God. And to corroborate that, that exactly what Paul now said in First Corinthians 13, when he was talking about love. Love is peaceful. Love does not, does not insist on being right and all those things. Very much like Galatians 5 from verse 22 down. That's right. Exactly. In fact, that's exactly what, what it is. And you find that whether we're looking at the epistles of Paul to the Romans or to any, he always will adduce, I mean, will point to the character of the Spirit. Mm. This is who we are. If mm. indeed the Spirit is in us, mm. then we will manifest the qualities mm. of the Spirit that is in us. And these are mm. the qualities. Mm. Wow, so I can also say that you know, when Paul was talking in 1 Corinthians 12, and after, after he listed the gifts, he now yes. mentioned in verse 31, he said, Convert earnestly, but I'm going to show you a more excellent way. He now began uh -huh. to talk about love. Meaning That's that it. the more excellent way to working in the gifts is to start working in love. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. The more excellent way to work in the gift is to start working in love. Remember again, the Bible says that, hey, by this shall men know that you are my disciples. Yes, sir. The love which you have for one another. So we don't even need to preach so much to the world as to live out who we are. Mm. That we do the preaching much more than a thousand words. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. That. You know, people will look at Fountain of Life today and there's no doubt, except they are spiritual suspects. I mean, they will be enamored by all that God is doing in Fountain of Life. It's amazing all that God has been doing over the years. And, um, but I want to ask just, you know, sir, uh, can we have a peep into the journey, you know, so far, the journey that has culminated into what we are all seeing and celebrating today? In the fountain of life. Uh, mm. uh, by the grace of God, I will say that uh, the first thing I will say to anyone that um, has contributed to what I mean, who we are and what we are today, and if I'm going to be advising anybody on same, I'll say number one: be very sure that you are called. Mm. be sure of your calling to be mm. sure is to stay focused refusing mm. to be distracted mm. to be driven around by all, I mean, all kinds of doctrines and then number two know that there must be something special that God has given you mm. that is meant for your generation hallelujah oh yeah Otherwise, why would he call you? He has enough in the field already. <laughs> but for him to have called you, then there's something in you mm. that you are bringing to the table mm. for your generation. Mm. Then number three, if that be the case, stay focused. That's mm. right. Knowing fully well that even if there are 10 similar ministries to what mm. you're doing, there are never two that are exactly the same. Something from each of these ministry that will supplement what you're doing. And there's mm. only something that all of them will have to wait for coming out from you to be able to fulfill mm. in all totality mm. their own mandates. Mm. So what we do is now that you know that you know, stay focused. Don't get distracted. And then mm. always remember that there'll be people who have, have walked this way before you. Even as there have been so many who are doing it together with you at this particular period of time. Always learn to recognize the special gifts in every individual. Wow. And always be inspired by what wow. God has given them to do that they're doing very well. Amen. Now, this got nothing to do with age. Mm. It's got nothing to do with education. Mm. It's got everything to do mm. with kingdom manifestation. Wow. So wow. I stay inspired by what this man is doing. And I can see one or two things there that, my goodness, it will help me. So I thank wow. him for his life. And I deploy mm. that 
and I begin to progress. So with all this one, it will keep me from competing. I'm looking for how to be inspired. Mm. I'm appreciative of what God can do with a man. Number one, I mean, and then of course, but part of it is fact that I am privileged to be here. You could have chosen any other person. Mm. When I tell myself and I tell our ministers usually this, look, God had an option of over of millions, but He chose you. Mm. So mm. be grateful. And now that you know that you've chosen, now be confident of your calling. Mm. Go for it. Mm. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. 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 We should be inspired. We should yeah. not be debated by yeah. anything or anything. Just inspired. Mm. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, how can a leader lead through crisis? Um, and uh, what are the five things that the leader should focus on? if and when called to lead through a challenging season? Five things, all right. So if I have three, I have to extend them to be five. No, three will be five. <laughs> and if I, if I have ten, I have to compress them to be five. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you got me there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Honest. You see, uh, uh, leadership uh, is not proven until tested. Maybe I've seen the same thing in different ways. <laughs> For example, when we got into this COVID-19 thing, there was once we were in the prayer meeting and I was telling the church online, that is, that do you know that the real asset test for leadership is what we're going through now? Leadership mm -hmm. at every level. Leadership in the home. Mm -hmm. Leadership mm. in the marketplace, leadership mm. in the government. Wow. Everyone that is truly a leader is being tested. Mm. Yes, Having said that, so how do you lead a crisis? Mm. Number one, be adequately knowledgeable, that is informed of the nature mm. of the crisis. Mm. We really cannot begin to prove a solution for what we have no clue about. And mm. what has been COVID 19 a bit difficult for us? Proper solutions for what we have no clue about. Wow. Yeah. What has made COVID 19 very interesting it's like, uh, is this not much was known about it. Mm. So we're coming to stay alive mm. and yet struggling to know what's this thing about. How does it really mutate? How does it really advance? How does it? So we st we're doing so many things at the same time. So it's been a bit difficult. So I won't say that you should be adequately knowledgeable or informed. The second thing then becomes be very, very visible. I tell you what. Be visible. Mm. Oh, yes, you have to be as a leader. Because the moment crisis strikes, all attention and focus is on you. Wow. Oh, wow. yeah. That's, that's why you're a leader. Mm. <laughs> so even if you are not ready with what you are wow. going to say to persuade the situation, your presence alone is enough. Mm. Mm. Always be positive. Mm. Okay. Number three. Constantly communicate with them from time to time. Mm. Be informed. The be extent, yes. Regularly. Mm. Yes. The extent of the problem and of course bring them into uh, the reality of what you're doing. We have done this, yeah. and this is what we are doing right now. And we are sure yeah. that this will happen. Constantly, mm. bring, I mean, communicate with them. Number four, please be sure to empathize with them. I know mm. what you are going through. Mm. I, mean, I can do something faster, but we're doing all yeah, right. Yeah, high priest who can be touched by the feelings of their infirmity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it helps, really, for them mm -hmm. to have more patience with you to bring about the solution. Mm -hmm. Then the fifth thing I would say is wow. this. <laughs> as much as you can, as much as you're doing a lot to solve the problem, mm -hmm. and then, of course, giving them, I mean, 
confidence that they'll go through. Begin to get them into your strategies for the post crisis okay. era. In other words, you're saying, you know what? This is what we're doing, and this is what we've done, mm. and this is how much we are still doing. And mm. so you are now saying to them that this time will pass, but to prevent this in the future, and to act, I mean, and to be able to do this, this, and this, and this, and these, and these are the things that we are doing right now. You know what we're doing? I'm taking their focus and their attention away from the from the seriousness of the moment, and I'm telling them that look, there's a glorious future right. ahead. So I'm hope, as it were. A Hallelujah. leader is a dealer in hope. Kabbalah, Masa, so these are five things I think we can do almost immediately. And you know, wow. God helping us. We'll always hey. the Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's been some conversations going on on this platform, and people are talking about is my daddy, is my daddy to Tolu is talking, Dr. David is talking, Pastor. Jimmy is talking. Where pastor is everybody's daddy, including my daddy <laughs> as well. <laughs> Amen. And Jesus is Lord. To do about it. <laughs> so those five things we all need to have them as our takeaways tonight. You have to be informed. The first thing God did when there was darkness upon the earth was that God said, "Let there be light." You've got to be informed. Number two, you have to be visible. Because everybody's looking up to leadership. Number three, you have to constantly communicate. They are having other sources of information. Make sure you are providing a different narrative for them in that circumstance. And then number four, you need to empathize. You can't be indifferent to the plight of those you have been called to lead. Whatever you cannot relate to, you cannot redeem. It's called the principle of King's Man Redeemer. And then number five, you must paint a picture of a preferable future. You are a dealer in hope. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Dad. Thank you so much, Dad. Now, the, the next question I have for you, sir, today is that how do you handle, I mean, you're a pastor of thousands and you've done that for decades and you've had to, you know, you, you have to, you have to deal, I mean, relate with people and, and, and human beings, like just human beings. All of us just have our peculiarities, our, our idiosyncrasies and all of those stuff. Sir, so, how would you advise somebody to handle disappointment in relationships and, and ensure that it does not color their judgments in future engagements? Hmm. That you rightly, you quoted rightly what really comes to mind. The hmm. saying that the best of men hmm. are always men are, are the best. Wow. Yes, so sir. everybody has his or her own shortcoming. Mm. So what would be my first reaction at disappointment? Mm. Disappointment. So when I'm disappointed, I feel disappointed. I don't think wow. about disappointment is this. You don't expect it. Mm. That's why disappointment. Mm. So the first thing it brings to, I mean, the, the, the first way it hits you is a shock. Wow. Mm. Mm. But such that you will not get stuck in the shock. Mm. Mm. You begin to wonder. I never expected this from this person, but now I'm getting mm. it. Mm. Then you say, Well, did I misjudge? Maybe I really didn't get to know this person. Or what can it be? So, what I do particularly is this I'm not dying for that I get hurt. I'm normal, I mean, I'm natural. So, so what am I doing? Then what do I do with that? Then I go, can I put myself in this place? Mm. Because I want to really understand what is happening. So when I begin to think, okay, putting my play, myself in this place. So why did he do what he did? What was he thinking? Could I have disappointed him somewhere? Mm. Could it be this? Could it be that? But doing that will give me two point uh, solutions. Number one, it will lead me to the, the unraveling of the answer to so my question. We bring about understanding the nature of the person, the nature of the person, or the weakness, as it were, of the person. And usually, when I begin to see that is a weakness, then it attracts my sympathy. 
that I begin to see a good man making a mistake. Otherwise, I will pour away the dirty water with the child, God forbid. So I can now begin to reach out to the man that hurt me, that offended me, to help him be better. In the first place, probably what attracted him to our organization or to me was the fact that he was trying to overcome a weakness, a nice thing with his mm. So it would be wow. terrible for me to now judge and cast the person away. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm hurting. I, I mean, I'm disappointed. But now, because I'm beginning to discover something of this person, my disappointment is less a problem. I now mm. see the reason why I've been called to this person, or this person I've been drawn to. Me. And so when we can get deal with that, then it will be easy for me to trust this person again. Again. On the other hand, if it's got to me that uh, I think he's just is a natural thing with this person, then again I begin to look at, well, that means that he doesn't have the ability for the assignments I'm giving to him. I'm expecting too much, too soon. So I have to now begin cutting down to small, I mean, smaller bits that can be handled and handled very well. So in that way, it encourages the person. But please, I'm not pretending. I was hurt. But I feel less hurt now because I have an assignment to accomplish in the life of these people. So under that circumstance, sometimes I'm, a, I'm able to turn back and say, I'm sorry, I misjudged you. And God has always helped us move forward by the grace of God. Wow. Yeah. Ah, uh, wow. Thank I you hope so that's, much. That's that, is, that, 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 that explains something. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So much takeaway from that. Absolutely, sir. I mean, one of the takeaways for me is that you don't throw away a relationship. You need to redefine yeah. the relationship. But you don't just throw the person away just like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. So in one of your books, 121 Days of Blessing, mm -hmm. on one of the days, specifically the 66th day, you spoke mm. about leaders and the value they must have for relationships. I, I love the analogy you gave. You were talking about when people travel, maybe a family traveling on a journey and everybody's gisting while the journey is ongoing. But the moment the driver begins to speed, you know, there will be silence will begin to take over from the discussion because everybody is now trying to watch out that we don't eat a pothole, we are able to navigate the bank successfully. So because we are speeding, you have broken down communication. You have, or you have, you have post communication because you are speeding. And you said in that book that one of the things that the leader should not do, even though you've got deadlines to meet, you've got yes. you know, goals you want to accomplish, but you must learn to pause to nurture relationships. You must learn to pause. To, and you get the example of David when oh. he was trying to recover, recover what the Amalekites took. And on the way, he found somebody who, um, I mean, the Amalekite slave of an Egyptian, or an Egyptian slave of an Amalekite master who was already losing life. And in spite of all that he was on a chase for, he paused to revive that individual, not knowing that that individual was going to be the key to the restoration that God promised him. That no matter what deadlines we have to meet, that we must learn to always recognize the people on our path and, and pause to not all those relationships. Can you please speak further on the importance of these given life examples? Wow, life examples. Okay. I, uh, I didn't know that you, were, you, you read that much. <laughs> but life examples, I mean, in my life, really, the way it has worked, I mean, uh, I sometimes see myself as a man that doesn't have too much rights in certain areas. I see myself as a man that has been highly privileged of God. And um, a lot of times I'm pushed to a corner and I'm trying to achieve something. More so when I begin to feel like the world is leaving me behind. 
And that's when, as a leader, you become a little bit irritable with your staff, mm -hmm. with your immediate, I mean, uh, relationships. And if you're not careful, you take it home to your wife. Wow. Oh, yeah. And then you need to take it out on your children, as it were. But the truth is this. Uh, we should learn to take things a little easier. For example, uh, when the prime meeting yesterday with the pastors, and uh, that is online, and we came in, and this, the, 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 the worship song was playing. I mean, those church songs were playing very, very soft and beautiful. And then it just dawned on me that, look, when we come in this way to his presence, there's an awesomeness. There's a reverence that is due him. There's a place for singing and shouting and clapping. And yes, but there's a place for quietness. And so you just come and join in, and they just keep on, hallelujah. The first thing that hits you will be like, man, God has been good to me. He's all over here. He's occupying every bit of hate of this place. And in his presence, really in his presence, I mean, think of it. I am conscious of the fact that I'm in his presence. What do you think of? Of course, I'm about. When the natural become conscious of the supernatural, they bow. Wow. So it becomes quietness and confidence, restoring strength. Mm -hmm. So at that point, then I began to say to them, this one word. I said, now there are deadlines out there that you've come out here for this one now for us to pray. Can we please disabuse mm -hmm. our minds of all the deadlines? They mm -hmm. can wait. Of all the urgent things, they can't wait. Can we seize this moment to enjoy the presence of our God? Can we begin to save all this God? And suddenly it was like all across the internet, he was tangible. So what am I saying? There are urgencies, there are deadlines. But when it comes to God, can this be good for five minutes? Can I talk to him? Can I just appreciate it? Let it be like those things don't exist at all. After all, what are they? He's the creator. Mm. He knows just a breath can change the whole thing. So why don't you give him more time? So in that same token, if I'm trusting God, then I will, my, see, my humanity will always carry God along. Remember? It's a shared life. So when I see a person in trouble, and I'm running for a deadline. Shared life. Wow. It's a shared life. And I'm running for a deadline. There are a thousand more deadlines. This life probably will not wait for me. So why don't I turn around? You see, many years ago, I read something from the leadership book, and this guy was uh, the president of one of the best, a renowned Bible school in the US for many years. And then the wife went ill. She was dying of cancer. It was a struggle for him. He got to a stage, he started cutting his time at work to half, and sometimes he missed work. He resigned. Then the question was asked, why are you resigning? He said, I want to give time to this woman. Let everything stop. I want to see her healed. And if this, if this is her last stage and she's going home, I want to, I want to share it with her. I want to cherish this woman to her. But that is, he resigned. Wow. What many people would give <laughs> everything to acquire. Now, what followed? I don't know. But I believe that that man's life is an example to follow. And like I said, had David not stopped to restore, to not try to restore life to a dying slave of an, an Egyptian mm -hmm. dying slave from America, he would never have recovered. He's wow. a family. So what more could be a deadline than running for time mm -hmm. for the life of my wife and my children who have been taken in captivity? So leaders actually have to know that leadership, sorry, relationship is all. And that's why we say the, the best of leadership is a people-centered leadership. Mm, people-centered leadership, not program-driven, not deadlines, you know, motivated, just people-centered. It's about people. Wow. So I, I, rather, I, I would also say, sir, that there are many things that we are chasing after and we never really get them because we're chasing after the wrong stuff. God has placed relationships in our lives that if we were to nurture those relationships, it's from those wells we can eventually drink, but we remain thirsty. We remain, we remain, you know, on a hot chase. 
of what I would call a smoke screen. We never, we never get to those things we're chasing after because we're not recognizing, you know, the privilege of nurturing the relationship that God has placed around us. You are quite right. And that's why today we have what we call the Bilonia's Club. Wow. When people, when men, have, when have women have worked hard, which is good, it's beautiful to work hard, and acquire so much, then they begin to look for where to invest. Not invest to get money, to invest into people's lives. Be providing potable water, eradicating certain diseases, providing education. But some years before, no, 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 they just want to get it. And now that you got it, where are you taking it to? You have to invest it in people. And that's why, really, I think it's making haste with some, with some <laughs> bit of <laughs> gentleness. Amen. Amen. So, uh, in your book, The Nigeria of Our Dream, you ended the chapter on the lesson for leadership with a quote by John Alistin. And in that, in that book, um, that quote was, the only thing you take with you when you are gone is what you leave behind. Uh, what is legacy and how do we build legacy? Uh, I think a man that is uh, wearing, you read a lot. <laughs> yes, and I really appreciate that. Uh, legacy, uh, the way I understand it, I think it's, it's embedded in your daily routine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what do I mean by that? It is what you're doing now that you'll be remembered for. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So someone is saying, how can I build my legacy? The, the, what, what, do I, what I say to that person is that whatever your hands find to do, please do it with all your might. How can I change my legacy now? How can I build my legacy now? How I handle my wife? How I handle my children? How my neighbors perceive me? How I handle my staff? How I deal with the poor? It's generally my habits, my lifestyle. That's what defines my legacy. So what is legacy? If, it's, if it is within your power to do good, please don't hesitate. Do it now. Mm -hmm. And please make sure that you don't do mind anything save the Lord. Wow. Wow. Just be nice as much as you can. Mm -hmm. That's legacy. Thank you so much, sir. Wow. What's your counsel for Christians in the entertainment industry? How can we use art as a tool for evangelism? You know what I'm laughing at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My son, he came in yesterday. I said, wait, wait, wait. I have a question for you. I said, what? I said how are you doing there? He said, Pastor, where are you going? Daddy, where are you going? <laughs> I said, I mean, how are you doing in the industry? He looked at me again and it's like, ah, you know, you know, you know everything I do. You, I mean, you, you, you talk to me, talk to me. The first time you heard, you heard me going, man, you hung me from left. I just started laughing. So to answer that question, really, I think um, the first thing I would like to that in any endeavor at all we find ourselves, we are witnesses for Jesus. Yeah. He says, uh, you will receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. It's a personal thing to him. So as long as I remember that I'm an ambassador, I'm a witness for Jesus, that's it. That will define my part. That will position me
evangelism. Even without saying a word. And when I look at it that way, I remember uh, when the uh, first time I said, Jimmy, no, you can't do that. I said, he said, what do you mean? I said, no, we can't do that. He said, but daddy, ooh. I said, because there are slippery grounds there. Then you don't know me. There are slippery grounds everywhere. There are slippery grounds in being a, a pilot. There are slippery grounds in being a lawyer. Slippery there are ground multiple slippery grounds in being a politician. Yeah. But remember, you're my ambassador. And if I don't have a mission for you there, I won't direct you there. And when I give you, when I give an assignment there, I will empower you appropriately. And so what really comes to mind is that, hey, you are the light of your world. Jesus said, as long as I'm on earth, I am the light of the world. Yeah. So when he turned around and said, you are the light of the world, what he was saying to us, like, as long as you are on earth, you are the light of, of your world. Mm. You are the light of your generation. So I'm giving an yes. assignment in the entertainment industry, you go be the light there. Oh, and the, the truth is this, whether you know it or not, you are like a city on a hill. They know you. Mm. So you had better just begin to be who you are even in the oh. entertainment industry, even in politics, even in law. Mm. Mm. And so what will be the result? Many be through you come to know the Lord as their Savior. Mm. Many who for years have been looking at you as, yes, fine, we are the condemned people, you are the good people. Say, okay, mm. we are all together, we are human beings. Jesus died for mm. all us. I only have to realize this yeah. earlier than you. You can realize it too. Come on. So they see less judgment and they begin to come into the fold. I believe I've said one or two things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sir. So, sir, uh, broadly speaking, I believe there are two categories of people. We may have some may want to break it down further, but two categories of people that um, the church is trying to reach. One would be the unchurched. Uh, the unchurched. And the second would be the dechurched. They de used to be in church, but they have left. They've become disillusioned and all of that. How can a church be best positioned to reach these two categories of people, the unchurched and the dechurched? Um, you know, Jesus said at the close of this of the gospel, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel oh. to every creature. So now we're talking about the unchurched and the dechurched. Um, you'll agree with me that if I can locate them and I can believe God to the part that leads to them, I will reach them. So if the church can locate them, then we can reach them. But it is that, yes, we can locate them. So where do we locate them? We know we talk about the five pillars of the society or the seven pillars of the society as it were. Whether it's the church or the unchurched or the church, everybody wants education. So the church should get into education. Mm -hmm. Let's go meet them there. And once we get there, wow. let's be the light. Let's go wow. into the entertainment industry. Wow. Let's go into, into the economy. Let's go into politics and government. So we can go on and on and on and on. And these are all people groups. These are all the people that we are told to reach. So they are the unreached groups. So we can now begin to go to reach them. And I believe so now that we have to begin to design programs and measuring the gifts amongst us that are called to these areas. I believe there are some areas that over the years the church has neglected for whatever reason. Mm. But now we're designing better mm. that he died for the whole world. And the great commission is to the entire world. Jesus mm. does not segregate. Wow. So we, we can only switch them. We have the people call to them right in our midst. We should be keep wow. keeping wow. attention, nurturing them and supporting them and getting them to go. So we don't wait for them to come to church. We go meet them where they are. Yeah. 
Man, we recognize what... gifts within the church yeah. that are uniquely gifted, grace anointed to reach people yeah. from different um, to reach different people groups. That. You see what you just said? It's just like you just adequately said what we've been doing. That we've been doing the other. We should have been doing the other way. He says, mm. go ye into all the world. But we have been sitting down waiting for the all the world to come to us. Come. But wow. now we have to go. <laughs> mm. We have to go. Whether in the way wow. we know missionaries to be, go to dry areas, or urban missionary, get into that industry. Get into that corporation. Get into that government. That's just the way it is. And we have to. By the grace of God. What about the media? Amen. We have to. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so well, in, in the same spirit of what you just said now, I was going to ask for that, that are there areas of ministry that the church perhaps needs to pay more attention to at the time we are in in human history? Yes. Um, if you look at, um, well, the age of the church, glibly speaking, 2,000 years ago, the church started. And at that time, there was a note of urgency about reaching the world. And so he said, you go, you go. That time, we can imagine what the population of the world was at that time. At this time, can there be anything more urgent for the church to do? I think we must give more attention to evangelism. Even for us pastors, Paul writing to Timothy, he said, do the work of an evangelist. I know that pastors are teaching pastors majorly, or counselors and nurturers. They say, do the work of an evangelist. So if there is something that we can give more attention to than any other time, Taking it from the last question is evangelism and then identifying special people groups that we have hitherto neglected. Wow. I think that's what we should do. Wow. So, so that even takes me to this. Uh, one of the things I've observed uh, in the fashion of life is how you recognize the gifting of God in people and wow. um, them to begin to walk in it. And um, they don't necessarily have to be full-time pastors, most people are bivocational, you know, in, in, in their calling. And uh, while they are pastors, you know, they know that the grace of God for ministry is upon them, but they also recognize the platform God has given them beyond the walls of the church. And you encourage them, empower them to be able to function in different sectors, you know, and, and they're making impact in different sectors. Yeah. Um from the start, by the grace of God, we recognize that um, um, the pattern of the church in the book of Acts uh, is such that we have all the gifts working. You can imagine the first local assembly, like when Pastor Ojo and I were talking some few weeks back, and we got to this place. I was saying to him, and of course, the people that, can you imagine in one local church in Jerusalem? <laughs> we had the likes of Peter, the likes of James, John. Wow, he won't look at what he said. Nathaniel, hey, all the apostles. Wow. So I was thinking, I said, God help me. And after a while, when there was trouble, when Paul had now become a Christian and they were trying to force the Gentiles to be circumcised. They brought the case back to Jerusalem for clarification, remember? And yes, after sir. all had spoken, then James, can you imagine? James, who was yes, not even an apostle when Jesus was here, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Or a time rather, when Jesus was here, was mm -hmm. one that said, okay, now all said and done, this is what we're going to do. And everybody submitted to the leadership of the pastor in wow. Jerusalem, wow. where Peter was. Mm -hmm. So I began to ask God, I said, look, there's something about the church that I still need to understand. Now, you can say, Pastor, that's, in, that's the body. You're right. But at the time, that was just one local assembly. 
And that will not give rise to the spread because of their ability to be in one spirit, one voice, and yet one body. So it was easy to grow and spread. Remember when they, then the church in Antioch in Acts chapter 13, and then the name where there are some teachers and prophets. Again, look at the caliber of people. And while they were ministering to God, then the Holy Spirit said, look separate unto me. Holy Spirit will talk. We will recognize gifts and we allow them to begin to operate in their gifting. And we submit to one another. Mm. So what we have what we have believed God to do in fact in really following Ephesians chapter four as it were. And I said it, I mean I tried to put some things down in my head when I was looking at this question that look. The pastor it's, uh, I mean himself is a ministry gift. And every ministry gift is given to nurture individual potential for the overall body growth. Mm. Every ministry gift. What is an apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist? Is given to nurture individual potentials in the church. So, with that in mind, we see everybody as a potential to become a child of the Lord. And we try to provide opportunities for them to grow as much as we can. So, while we are doing this, we keep having the fact that, hey, team spirit is a must. And so if you look at the first act, we are all in one accord. All in one accord. All in one accord. I said, why are they within this? And so we believe God for grace to be able to, you know, allow people to develop their potentials and rise up. And so God has been able to answer that and give us giants in the ministry and yet their members. They do their due, I mean, they, their due services in the local assembly and yet they are... <laughs> People are falling all over the path for them when they walk on the streets. When they move into them, people are bowing everywhere when they come to stranger. They are members of front. <laughs> and we really and we appreciate them. We love them. We celebrate them. And age is not an issue. It's the grace of God, actually. And that's how it has been. And that's why, by the grace of God, uh, it's been easy. Or either than we expected. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. And most of them, as Pastor Ney, most of them are reaching where I have never reached in my life. Wow. Where I may never reach in my life, but they are reaching there. And where they are getting to, they are knowing that there is a local assembly somewhere in the corner of Lagos, co founder of Life Church. And God has been so good to us. And God is taking all the glory. Thank you so much, Daddy. Uh, that's that's so much to, to crunch, to, to just post and ponder upon tonight. So what's your counsel for couples that are going through a financial crisis at this time and it's beginning to take a toll on their relationship? Yeah. You see, you don't run into trouble with people except as you get closer to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the example I mean, I give when I'm teaching, of course, which I meditate upon myself, is the fact that, look, if I'm driving through Oshidi, Oshidi, so the busiest local bus stops in Lagos, can be very rough. Um, if I'm walking through Oshidi, and one of the street boys just decided to attack me, you know what I'm doing? I start praying that God save me. And I'm saying, I take authority over that spirit. I bind the name of Jesus while I quickly walk away. I won't wait to say it's my right to defend myself, so I'm going to give a punch in return. No. If you're drinking me to that level, and why am I saying this? I don't have such relationship that will require my standing to give an answer. But the one with whom I have a close relationship. Tendency is like, ah, ah, going back to disappointment. Then you disappoint me by agreeing that way, disappoint me by asking that question. So, what I'm saying in effect is that it's to the extent that I love you that we have crisis. In our relationship. Mm -hmm. The more intimate we become in a relationship, the more demanding the relationship becomes. And so, when there's a problem, you quickly want to 
like the natural would do, to shift the blame on. Come on. If you didn't say this, if you didn't be this way, if you didn't do that. But I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't dare do that to the boy in Oshodi. So if I mm. think properly during crisis, I'm like, wow, this is the person I love so much. And the problem is not her. The problem is the lack of force. So I would rather ask God to give grace while I focus on how to solve that problem than take the problem, than shifting my problem and my frustration on the person that I started to stick with me, to love me the rest of my life. So I don't want to allow a small issue destroy a big thing and a big future. And if you look at it this way, it was first in the kind of Eden that we see something like that. After the fall, it was the woman you gave me. Ah, so it has shifted from, she's the flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone to, it was the woman you gave me. Mm. Mm. Wow. So what do you advise them? Please, again, the fruit of the spirit. Be patient with your husband, be patient with your wife. After a part in, in this cluster of gifts is long suffering. God mm. help me. Mm. It's because I love him that I'm having an issue with him. Because I love that I'm having an issue with her. So I want him to prefer to that person. So when we agree together to solve the problem, it will be solved faster. Mm. But when we cannot disagree, shifting blames, it gets worse. Mm. Well, all we want to call and they ate their meals with gladness of heart. Mm. And no one lacked anything. Mm. So don't allow strife. It dries up the supplies. It dries up the supplies. Yes. Strife. Wow. Yeah. So, husband and wife, embrace each other. You are not the problem. Both of you face the problem. God will help this one with faster than God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So our final thoughts. What's your counsel to the church on how to best function post-COVID? Ah. The COVID, this COVID era is a trying era. There's no doubt about it. I mean, attacking every aspect of life. The one good thing is that it's not able to stop life. When I say mm. able to stop life, no, some, yeah, some have died, but it cannot stop life as we know it on earth. God will not allow that to happen. Praise God. Mm. So I would say that that means that there are certain ways that we did things before that we cannot do again. There is mm. a big paradigm shift, as it were. Mm. So we are, we are now beginning to unlearn certain things that we have learned. I will now beginning to learn certain things that we have not known before. So what I'm saying is that there's a reinvention that is a reinvention mm. rather that is happening. So what my advice, please continue to reinvent yourself post COVID. Mm. And what we know that has been tested and cannot be shaken, let's carry them along and for strengthen them. And the things that we know are now been, are been redefined. Come on, let's get in there quickly perfect it and master it uh, so it's going to leave us better than it met us in the name of Jesus. There's a glorious future for the church. There's a glorious future Amen. for the Christian in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a evening. Daddy, thank you so much. We are grateful, immensely thankful for tonight. I, I am, I've been blessed tremendously. And I must say that um, we are blessed in this country with young and anointed dynamic young men, I mean, men and women. You are one of them. There's a great future for you. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. God bless you, Thank Pastor you for the invitation. We are grateful, Daddy. Thank you, sir. And my love to Pastor Diola. Oh, my boy. <laughs> great to see Pastor Long. And I everybody. Will. I will. Yeah. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Daddy. Everybody, Bye. bless everybody.